Hello everyone, this is Jerry Foley from PBM and uh, I would like to uh, talk with you uh, this afternoon about PBM's new line of cryogenic two-piece and three-piece ball valves. Um, the cryogenic industry uh, is uh, an expanding, growing industry throughout the world. Uh, the use of uh, cryogenic liquids and gases uh, has expanded tremendously in the medical field, in, in the semiconductor, in um, uh, process plant, in hydrocarbon, uh, in all sorts of areas uh, uh, in recent years. And the need for um, superior uh, shutoff valves has become more and more of an issue. Uh, because of the inherent problems that you have in cryogenic uh, gas manufacturing. The, the, the fact of the matter is you're taking a, a gas and liquefying it and lowering its temperature down to areas uh, as cold as minus 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And yet the processes start at higher temperatures, sometimes up around 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So you've got tremendous temperature differences that valves and piping and other components must live in. And valves create uh, a problem unto themselves just because of the way valves, ball valves are made. Uh, you're dealing with uh, issues of expansion and contraction of not only the metal components of the valve bodies and ends and balls, but you're also dealing with the seats and the seals and the packing on the stem because as those parts expand and contract, they are, uh, their dimensions are changing. Uh, and because of that fact, especially under the cold situation where dimensions are going to reduce, not grow, but reduce from a normal manufactured warm condition to something less. This is where problems uh, become apparent because the seats will uh, decrease differently at a different rate than the body, the metal parts. And so many times you find yourselves with leakage in, in valve body seats, uh, seals, in the seats of, and the ball. All of those areas become a very large problem area. PBM, when it decided to get into this and create a uh, three-piece and a two-piece cryogenic valve, looked at others in the industry and realized that the problems that, they, that I was mentioning, especially leakage, seat and seal leakage, were by far the biggest problems there were. Again, because these valves are cycled many times. Uh, they are isolation valves. They're isolation valves on the trucks that take the liquid oxygen across the roads in America. They are on the loading arms that load those trucks. They are in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, the coal boxes, those, those columns that are used for creating the liquid uh, uh, gases. All of those areas where temperature swings are seen are places where ball valves fail or don't perform in the long term as well as they should. And as again, it's that, that seal uh, problem between the metal parts and the seats themselves. Let me show you what we have designed. This is PBM's three-piece CP7 version series of our cryogenic valve. It has some very interesting and very important design features. First of all, it is a three-piece valve, two ends and a center body. A ball in the center, which is, which is indexed to the shaft, the stem, an elongated stem because you want to keep the packing which is at the top of the valve stem away from the cold areas, which is the, 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 the fluid flowing through, the, uh, through the, the valve. The seats themselves are TFM, chemically modified Teflon. Over our year, three or four years of testing and evaluation, we find that this material in our design functions the best, maintains the seal on repetitive, repetitive, repetitive cycling of 400 down to minus 320, back up to ambient, back down to minus 320 uh, temperature cycles. Um, the seats, because of this change in dimension, 
must have compressive load against the ball to maintain that seal and that seating seal during this change in temperature. For that, we use large bevel washer um, spring loading, live loading, live loading. The, the spring is a compression spring, and as the parts move, that spring is going to compress the seat against the ball, relieve it, compress it according to how that dimension is changing. So this is what we use, as you can see, it's right here. This is the spring load that we apply to that seat. Now, this is a unidirectional valve, and it's interesting what that means. It means that flow is in one direction. You have a high pressure side and a low pressure side. Well, why, do you, why is that? Because in order to maintain a safe operating condition, you do not want to have any of the gases trapped within this ball area. You want to make sure that the get that uh, on its own. You want to make sure that the, that if there is a pressure in here, that it is not a different pressure than the upstream pressure. So what you end up doing is you create a valve with a bleed hole at the upstream side. As you can see, there's a hole right in the center of the ball. What this does, it allows the upstream pressure in the closed position to come into the ball into the cavity and equalize upstream pressure and the ball cavity pressure. Very, very important to make sure that is done because you don't want to have a low pressure and a high pressure in the center which could cause an explosion. Right? So we're equalizing pressure. But because we have that hole in the ball on the upstream side, it becomes just a unidirectional valve. If we had this ball so that the pressure came from the upstream side, we would have no way of relieving it because there's no, or from the downstream side, there's no way of relieving that ball because there's no hole here. So you have a hole on the upstream side, uh, equalizing the pressure with the, uh, with the center body of the valve. So it's one directional, flow is one direction, this direction only. Now, to make sure that people understand which direction is the correct direction, we make sure that we mark the body with an arrow high pressure, low pressure, so they know what side of the piping it should go to on this valve. And we also index the stem. There's an arrow which corresponds with the arrow on the body. So this way we know that when we're looking at the valve, if, we can't, if this valve is, is jacketed and we can't see the body, we can look down on the stem and see which way is the valve flowing. Obviously if the arrow is in that direction, this is high pressure, that's low pressure. All right, safety again. We talked about the fact that this is live loaded. We also do a few other things. We, uh, as far as safety is concerned, we use a spring lock handle on the handle of the operating handle of the valve. Again, this makes sure that since this is spring loaded, it is not a sliding lock, a spring loaded lock, this ensures that that handle is in a position, period. If I want to make that valve move, I've got to, in my mind, say, I want this valve to open. I've got to push on it, and then I can rotate the handle. And there it goes. It locks back in place. I can't turn it now. Okay? So it's a locking handle. Make sure that no one can inadvertently open or close this cryogenic valve. The other thing that's very important in a valve like this is to have it internally grounded to make sure that there is no chance for a static spark. Don't forget you're dealing with hydrogen, you're dealing with oxygen, you're dealing with various gases, uh, and you're dealing with the, the, the um, liquid gases uh, down to minus 325, which is, uh, minus 320, I'm sorry, uh, minus 320, which is uh, uh, nitrogen, liquid nitrogen. And you have to be prepared to make sure that there is no static discharge around the valve to cause a fire or an explosion. So we internally ground this valve. There is, in other words, the line is grounded the flu the, from the uh, incoming uh, piping <clears throat> all the way up through the handle, okay? So that the, the entire valve uh, components are grounded uh, so that we can uh, dissipate a charge coming from the fluid through the valve and back onto the piping system from one side to the other, okay? Now, so two things, low, um, grounding, and the, uh, the spring lock handle. Uh, let's talk about, let's talk about this, this stem for a few minutes here. 
Notice that, as I said before, we had an extended stem. The extended stem is such uh, that uh, it, it is there to remove the packing away from the cold of the valve body. Because this is really where we want to, is if we can maintain that seal uh, and not worry a whole lot about you know, this, this movement, um, we want to keep it out of the cold to protect that seal. And again, the seals are still live loaded. You have the same packing idea, three bevel washers being pushed onto a follower, and then you've got two stem seals. One is a, um, a uh, STEF, which is stainless steel filled Teflon. The other one is a TFM, again, the chemically modified Teflon. Here again, these are live loaded. That means that as the parts grow and relax, grow and relax, wear during the turning, that, that live loading, those live loading bevel washers are pushing the packing together, pushing them down onto the stem to make sure that that stem is always under compressive load. The seal is always under compressive load so that you maintain your seal. So again, live loaded packing up on the top, live loaded seats in the valve body to compensate for wear, but mostly, most importantly to compensate for the temperature fluctuations, the growing and relaxation during the temperature swings. Okay? Now, as far as, as um, uh, the stem again, now this stem is typically we have the stem extension is a nine inch stem extension as a standard. Many people want 12 inch, not a problem. Many of your larger uh, uh, users like Gerald Lakeed and some others want 12 inch. Well, we can provide that, not a problem. Uh, six inch, we can provide that. We can make that stem extension. We've, we've, we've actually designed them for 30 inch. We can do that based upon what the customer wants. The other area is, is, is uh, uh, ends. Uh, according to what the site is using, they may be using flanged valves. They may be using a uh, threaded end on pipe. They may be using socket weld or butt weld or a mixture thereof. And unfortunately, most of the times, the site has to take a threaded valve, such as this, and add components to it to get to a flange by butt weld, or a socket weld by flange, or a socket weld by butt weld. Whatever it might be, they have to add parts, which makes it a much longer valve, and, and introduces two and three and four additional leak paths where they had to make these unions, these connections. What PBM does, because this is what we've been doing all of our lives, we design the valve ends to suit the, the situation. In this particular case, um, uh, for instance, we have uh, threaded ends, uh, socket weld ends, and butt weld ends. Now, socket weld ends and butt weld ends have to be obviously either soldered, soldered or welded. Okay? And the problem with that is if you, if you try to weld onto an end that's, that's this long, which it normally would be for a standard of someone else's valve, you would have to take the valve apart to weld the pipe onto that because if you weld it on this short stub, what's going to happen is that you're going to melt those seats and melt the packing possibly. Okay? So what PBM did, we've got experience in the pharmaceuticals where we have uh, manufactured for years standard extended butt weld and socket weld ends with extended ends that are to the length that we know even an automatic welding machine can grab onto it and weld it without hurting the internals of the valve because in those industries they don't want to take valves apart either. So a very nice thing about feature about PBM is that when we supply socket welds or butt welds on our valves they already come with extended ends that extend probably out about, about two to three inches based on the size of the valve. That is more than enough to enable the welder to come in and weld right on that valve without having to take this apart. Now don't forget, these valves, because they're oxygen valves, typically, oxygen, nitrogen, the, the specifications call for them to be oxygen manufactured and cleaned. That means that they have to be cleaned by a specific set of requirements that either the end user or PBM has given out and has suggested we use. Now PBM is an approved uh, uh, O2 cleaning facility for uh, air liquid, which is one of the king uh, uh, liquid uh, uh, you know, gas uh, suppliers in the country, in the world actually, and we are one of their approved uh, factories for cleaning with oxygen or cleaning for oxygen service. Uh, and so that is a that is a very important.
apart. Uh, so you don't, and, and they know that they don't have to take these valves apart. So when they're cleaned and bagged, they're fine. They don't have to work full with them. They can just take them out of their stores and put them in the line. Now, one of the, uh, one of the other features on this valve is that uh, where we use Teflon seats for the valve sealing on the ball, we use graphite, O2 cleaned graphite, as the body gaskets and bonnet gasket on this valve. Um, this is a very important feature for us as far as maintaining uh, repeatability and sealability over the cycle life of those temperature cycles, and that is the way this, uh, this valve is available. Uh, the, the metallurgy, we, can, we, we have these available in 316 stainless in the different bronze materials. Uh, we can make this valve out of anything. Uh, it's like uh, our standard ball valves. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the list of available materials uh, is not endless. It just goes to what God created. Uh, so that's the other important feature on this valve. The, uh, but it, we do have actuation available. You can actuate all of these valves. Uh, the, the, and the, the torques are published for your uh, uh, you know, um, uh, interest in our, in our uh, catalog. As far as size is concerned, uh, these valves are available right now from half inch to uh, two inch full port. Um, uh, we are planning on going to larger sizes, three and four. Uh, this is a 300 pound class valve, which means it's good for 720 PSI. All right, so we're looking at a valve that's 720 PSI, minus 320 to 400 plus 400 degrees. That's quite a range of capabilities within this one little valve. Now, the other uh, option, of course, is our two-piece valve. It is, the, it is our two-piece ANSI valve, uh, which is either 150 pound flanged or 300 pound flanged. Uh, that is the difference, and that's all full ports. So again, that's half inch through two inch. So you've got uh, two styles of valves to choose from. At the three-piece with multiple ends or the two-piece ANSI face-to-face -face flanged 150 and 300 pound class valve. All the rest of it is the same. The, the, the pressure class of the, 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 the design, all of that. Now, uh, the, um, uh, the valves uh, are, again are, are available from PBM now. Uh, we, um, we are looking at very short deliveries, less than six weeks. We have material in stock for, uh, and we're ready to take your uh, inquiries. All of these valves meet uh, MSS SP-134 as far as leakage and manufacture. And that uh, you can, if you don't have a copy of that, you can contact PBM uh, and we will be glad to send you a copy of that particular MSS specification. It is a specification used by the industry in uh, ball valve and gate valve and butterfly valve design. It's a standard. Uh, it should, would be interesting for you to see it. Um, I uh, would suggest that if you, if you have inquiries for PBM uh, on, on our cryogenic valve, and we would be very happy to help you design uh, you know, uh, our valve around your requirements, uh, one of the easiest way to do that is to use PBM's uh, customer inquiry sheet. What this does, and it's very, very useful for, for us and for you too, it, allow, it, it tells us who you are and what you're trying to do. It, it, we talk about application, the criteria, what it is, the pressures, the temperatures, the fluids, the flows, that sort of thing. Um, and then the valve requirements. Does that have to be actuated? Is it manual? Uh, do you have special ends? Are there special considerations that we must take into consideration as an as a innovative a uh, valve maker, a differentiating valve maker. Uh, we look at your application and we design the valve for you. We just don't give you our standard valve. This is our standard valve, but from this is just a start. We take this and we make it the way you want it. Uh, that's what that valve requirement is all about. And uh, then down at the bottom we talk about automation. What it is that you want to do with this valve. How do you want to automate it? Is there any special instrument requirements, any special um, you know, control requirements that we must know. That is in here. So all of this is very helpful information and this is available from PBM. I would suggest that if you do have a, either a, an application or a, a requirement that you contact either PBM Direct here in Irwin, Pennsylvania or your, or your local uh, PBM representative. 
uh, around the world. We have 65 of them ready to serve you. And, uh, and a number of, we've got six regional managers who work with our reps on a daily basis who would be willing to come in and help you as well. So please feel free to contact us. I hope that you've gotten an idea of what it is that PBM does with the cryogenic valve. We are looking forward to working with you in the future, and I hope to be hearing from you soon. Thank you very much.